Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they're growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. My guest today is local celebrity chef Adam Tabora, founder of Manelli Spice Company. Welcome to the show, Adam. Thank you, Melly. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so why don't we have you start off by sharing your story? How did, how did you get started? Well, it all started off on the beach uh, over in Lanai in uh, Manele Bay, um, where I grew up. I was about 17 years old, about four days after high school. Um, I, was, uh, I found a man face down drowning and uh, had the opportunity to fish him out of the ocean, um, get him back to uh, normal, I want to say, um, gave him, send him off in the ambulance, and that day just changed my life. Um, so you were just hanging out at Manele Bay. Yeah. Um, it's, that's kind of the main hub, right? Kind of the like a, one of the nicer beaches on the bay, on the island, and someplace where I grew up with our family and friends hanging out. Literally four days after high school, just hanging out with my friends, not knowing what we're going to do. Okay. Yeah. And so you, you brought this man back to the beach, resuscitated him, uh, and... I brought him back. His name was Del Proctor. Uh, his wife, Margaret, was there, and some of their friends from the mainland. And uh, after getting him into the ambulance and going back into my little gathering, um, weeks later, um, Del Proctor came looking for me through my mother. Alanae, which uh, her phone number is still the same. <laughs> Alanae, and my mom answered the phone and got a call from a random gentleman named Del Proctor and told him the story, which I never told my mother, so it's kind of shocking for her to hear. And from there on, he offered me the opportunity to go to culinary school as I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was going to be either a lifeguard, a fisherman, <laughs> or go to culinary school. And I decided to take on the challenge of moving away from the state and taking on that big educational leap of Getting my, getting my career going with culinary. So yeah. I heard that he asked you what your dream was, and you, and you said, you know, you want, you want to be a chef. Yeah. And as you just wanted to thank you. Yeah, and actually, uh, he asked me what I was going to do with my life, and I said, you know, I wasn't sure yet, but I really wanted to become a chef at some point because growing up in Hawaii, we had uh, natural abilities to hunt, gather, dive, butcher, cut, um, farm, and all that fun stuff. So. As, he, as I mentioned to him, I want to go to culinary school, he asked me where, and I, I kind of shot far off the grid, and I picked Portland, Oregon, and I went there because I knew nobody, and I wanted to start my life where I could just focus on school, mm -hmm. and he actually was kind enough to, to pay for my culinary school. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. So, right. so he paid for your culinary degree, which really got your start yes. in culinary, and, you, and you've had such an illustrious career uh, with so many opportunities, and you know, being a local boy from Lanai, and, and being on Food Network, can you share kind of how that all came to be and, and, and other so, parts yeah, of, of that I journey? Mean, that's, that's a fun part of it. You know, it came 20 years later, but uh, for 20 years I've been in resorts, great, some great resorts around Hawaii and some restaurants, and I, uh, I was groomed by some really good people that kind of watched me grow through the business. And the reward back was to actually keep going and persevere through that hardship of being a chef, becoming a chef in the resorts. And, and there's, there's only a few jobs like that here in Hawaii, and I found my way to the top. And once we got to that point, I wanted to open up my own company. And prior to that, um, we had an opportunity, me and my brother and my friend Sean, to go on the great food truck race on the Food Network. What season was that? That was season four. I think we have some images to, to share that, that whole fun experience for you. So that's your brother, Lanai. My brother, Lanai, to the left. Good friend, Sean, in the middle, our driver of the truck, and, of course, myself. And uh, that's uh, about... Some years behind now, but it's great, it made great memories for us and great opportunities as well. So, so okay, so you guys won season four. How do you, how do you think you won? You know, I think we won because we didn't go in having one specific plate or item. Like some people chose sandwiches and hot dogs and, and um, tacos. We chose Aloha plate. And we, could, we figured anything we put on a plate with Aloha would work. And we kind of stumbled in the first couple of cities because we didn't understand the game at all. And then once we kind of caught on the game after Beverly Hills, um, me, my brother, and Sean put our heads together and we went coconut wireless. So we started calling any or every Polynesian or Hawaiian or anyone related to Hawaii. Um, from people that I went to college with 20 years ago, I reached out to them and slowly we started to build our following. And that's how I think it started. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so you won. And what, what happened? What did you win? So we, we as a team won $50,000 cash. We won a food truck, which we didn't have, never have. People thought we had a food truck. No one had a food truck in that season. They kind of gave us a beaten old truck that they fixed up, and uh, we, got, we won ours. And uh, it's back in Hawaii now, and, and things just started blowing up when we got home. 
So after you won that and kind of what was what was the next next big step? And obviously now you've had your culinary degree, you've had some great positions at different hotels on Maui and Oahu. Yeah. Now you won the great food truck race. What what happened next? So what happened was we, we we sat back, we tried to run, we ran the truck in some major events like Coachella, LA Food Festival, we got invited to all these great things. Uh, Spam International picked us up, 7-Eleven picked us up. We started to get picked up by some really good brands. Uh, collaborating, representing, and then finally at one point in the game, I needed to go back and be Adam to burn the kitchen. And uh, my brother and Sean, of course, they they're busy guys with their with their careers. So everyone kind of went scattering back to their 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 safety zone, I want to say. And I went back to mine because that's where I, I felt my passion was 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 lied. Uh, I was living, and um, I came up with this idea of creating a spice blend. And I was running wholesale for about seven or eight years, and it did okay. And then I kind of wanted to venture off to retail, and I knew that getting into retail, I knew nothing about, so I needed to find some really good help, you know. And so where did you find that help? I found the help through great friends at Mana Up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know that, you know, you had the this, this spice company for a long time, like you were saying, mostly in wholesale, um, yeah. servicing a lot of the great chefs that you've become friends with, well-respected, who also respected you, um, and then wanting to get more into direct-to-consumer. Um, and, and did a real rebrand. And so yeah. what did you name the company and why? You know, um, name, renaming the company was, was always something I wanted to do because in retail, I needed to have a good brand. I needed to, I needed to, I needed to pop. I needed to make noise. I'd have to have a really good story. Um, the Spice Rack, wholesale side of it, was just a, a company that serviced other restaurants. It wasn't really a standalone brand. So what I did was I met up with my friends at Mana Up and helped me rebrand Manele Spice Company, which originated from Manele Bay, where the story all falls back and stems back to Del Proctor. So it's really paying homage to like your start in culinary. Absolutely. It always goes back to the roots. Yeah. So let's um, talk about uh, the different inspirations for each of your five flavors so far. And I know you've got more coming out soon. Yes. And we're going to be... Uh, having a launch at Foodland very yes. shortly too. Exciting, exciting. Um, so yeah, walk us through some of the flavors. So every five, five skews and uh, one, of the, one of the flavors that I want to talk about first is the upcountry chili pepper salt. And this was created because of growing up in Lanai, you know, I always talked about putting that one blend into one bottle. So I created five of them. And uh, this specific one, the chili pepper blend I use for my poke, my raw fish, and anything I want spicy, even on just some plain vegetables, they work really well. But this is, uh, this is for my grandfather, you know. He taught me how to uh, harvest and cook. What's that one called? This, the, this one is the upcountry chili pepper up uh, salt. Chili pepper. Yeah. Okay, so cool. that's, the grandpa, that's grandpa's salt. Okay. Um, my next salt is my uh, emu salt. It's a backyard emu. This one's real fun, really smoky. Um, these are all natural salts. What we basically do is we take uh, high quality ingredients from around the world and I infuse it into our local Hawaiian rock salts that we have here locally in Hawaii. And what I did was I created this blend specifically because I wanted to share with the world what an emu tastes like. An emu is an underground oven that the Hawaiians cooked in traditionally. And I think I nailed down a little, pretty close to what it would taste like. When I travel, I can't dig an emu in someone's yard. But what I can do is let them have that feel of what an emu smells like and tastes like in one little bottle. That's one of my favorites. You just crack that thing open and it just like comes out you just feel like you're so aromatic yeah, yeah. you're at like a luau or yes, something and exactly. i'll even put a little in my hand and like have it's like a snack <laughs> exactly. it almost makes me like think i've eaten some like Kalua like pork, pork or something, or something. <laughs> exactly. I just a piece of salt. <laughs> that's exactly what i'm trying to get at you know they're right there <laughs> i'm gonna skip this and i'll get back to that okay. one i'm gonna start on the far end this, this is the whole kupu salt this is the way mocha to makai blend i use this on my finishing salts because i want to have people be able to taste a little bit of our mountain there's a there's bamboo essence there's uh, charcoal flavor in there. There's a little bit of smoke and spice, but it's mainly about that mocha to makai flavor. And I like to put it over all my finishing salt, uh, salads, or sauces. So my whole kupu is a gift. And you can see like all three of the colors. Like yes, the really nice, really nice color contrast throughout the blend. As far as sitting on the shelf, it has a really nice color. So really it's nice the, blend. The, yeah. It's the alai, the red, and then the green, yeah, and the, the black. black. And yeah. some spice and so smoke just to balance it out. Nice. Uh, this is my um, Tutu Mama's Garlic Herb. Uh, this is one of my favorites. We grew up in Hawaii and Lanai always saying everyone's house always had a garlic salt. And one day when I was a kid, I told my mom, let's make our own garlic salt because we always use it. 
So this one is homage to my mother who's cooked off throughout our lives and taught us how to use simple ingredients and make simple food come to life. And to mama's garlic herb, it's really nice color. There's a little bit of spice in there as well and some nice dried herbs and it comes together really well when you're cooking. You must love that, huh? Yeah, Your mom is a force to be reckoned with too. Oh boy, she's the <laughs> boss. And then last but not least is like, I call this my um, Manele everyday blend. This is the story, this is the storyteller. Um, this is the one me and my friend sat around on the beach barbecuing and we always wondered, what can we do to put everything that we want in one bottle and take it wherever we go and use it every day on everything. And we came up with the Manele Bay every day. So this one actually goes out to the people of Lanai and my friends back home. Well, it's just one jar heading one down to jar. the beach. Everything's in it. So it's basically a little bit of all of these guys in here, but to a balanced flavor where it doesn't overwhelm the, the ingredient. I think you tried it before on a piece of fish or something, right? Oh, yeah, I sure <laughs> did. And I put it on my eggs every morning. I love this. And I always put these in pepper grinders. I can make it even more fine. So it's in rock form now, but you can grind it down and make it more fine for finishing. So the, the rock salts from Molokai? The rock salts are from Molokai, Hawaii Kai farmers. So mahalo to them as well. And when you purchase my five set, you get a cute little uh, recipe card that hangs over your refrigerator. So every day you get to see me to remind you, don't forget to use my seasoning on your food. <laughs> so, in terms of culinary, you had you know a great career. I think we have a couple kind of cool images of um, of you in the kitchen, as well as as well as some of the. That's you. Where's that? So right now, um, I had opportunity to do a cookbook in 2017 with Mutual Publishing and Star Advertiser, and um, they gave me a chance to work with a culinary school out in LCC, the Leeward Community College, which is really cool because uh, I think uh, KCC and the in town gets a lot of attention and I wanted to work with the school that had the least attention on the island and I think they have a lot of great potential out there with upcoming chefs and which is a great opportunity to build a cookbook with uh, students. Okay. Um, so who's like your inspiration in terms of your like your culinary taste or, or even another a chef or, or even a person in the world that's inspired you to be you know, kind of who you are? Honestly I thought about that a lot lately. It's a little bit of everybody. You know, I think within my family and friends, you know, they always say it takes a village to raise a man. And I think the village I come from is Hawaii and Lanai more specifically. And I think from my grandparents to my family to my friends' parents, I've learned everything from hunting to fishing. Uh, we didn't have a hunting guide or a director. We had our parents, our grandparents and our uncles to teach you how to load a gun, load a spear, shoot a fish, clean a fish and all that fun stuff. And I think I would like to give love to everyone, you know what I mean, for that. And so in terms of um, more on your culinary style, uh, when okay. you're making different types of food, well, how would you describe that style or is it really just anything with aloha on the plate? <laughs> uh, you know, I think, um, I, I think I like to say at this point in the game, I like to serve aloha one bite at a time. And I think with that said, my, some of my mentors that coached me and groomed me, um, they're still active. A lot of them, some of them have passed. Some of them are sick as we speak. Um, but I think... What gave me the inspiration was them letting me know that there's more out there than just becoming an executive chef. There's more to do. There's more to learn. So like we're always going to be students of this business. And every day I wake up, I put my hand in my knife, and I always remember the first day I did it, culinary school. So <laughs> <laughs> it's always being, always being um, thankful for the startup because the startup is what gets you to where you are today and then persevering through all those challenges to life and then of course the culinary business wasn't an easy it's not an easy ladder to get up but yeah. uh, the payoff is you know hard work and and believing in what you believe in and just gotta keep going well uh we'll be back after this break and learning more about your startup and entrepreneurial experience here in hawaii thank you aloha i'm katherine Noor, and i'm the host of much more on medicine on think tech hawaii we talk about medical issues and i interview guests regarding medical matters and I'm really excited about upcoming guests. I hope you join us every other Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha, and see you then. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at 1 o'clock for Cannabis Chronicles, the 10,000-year odyssey, where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, Cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays, 
at one o'clock. I thank you. Aloha, welcome back. I'm Melly James of Let's Mana Up, and we're interviewing today local celebrity chef Adam Tabora, founder of Manelli Spice Company. So, uh, Chef Adam, you, you launched Manelli uh, after just having this incredible experience and career. How has that been for you as an entrepreneur here in Hawaii launching, launching this company? You know, it's been great. It's been a, it's been a struggle. Um, I, I, I don't regret any of it. I think it's been a learning lesson on many levels from self-management, keeping my composure through the rough times of cost, dealing with learning how to do packaging and UPC codes and all these fun things that retail consists of. That was very new to me, and I think um, it opened my eyes to a lot of other things in, in this business to understand that it isn't easy to do business in Hawaii, but it can be if you plan right, you get, you get with the right people to support it, and also you have to find the right people that it believes in you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, what, what kind of uh, advice would you give to other um, budding entrepreneurs looking to start something up here in Hawaii? You know, after going through the Mana program and meeting some really cool companies, and I made a lot of great friends and family through them, one of the things we always talk about is, um, planning, organizing, and focusing on, 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 that, on that specific area or item. Um, I, one, at one time was stretched too thin and I did it to myself. And I think having too much things going on at once could really make things gray and cloudy. And I think in the last year and a half to two years, I've really focused on um, one item and that's Manali Spice Company. And I think if entrepreneurs really wanna succeed in Hawaii, you got to do a lot of homework. You know, you got to understand the cost of things and, and, and shipping and sending back out, um, creating that brand and that, and that just that marketing that people would want to engage in. And I think that's a tough part in Hawaii because there's so much great um, talent here in Hawaii, not just in food, but in any area of um, entrepreneurship. But in food itself, um, Spice is a, is a company where it's expensive, you know, it, it's not cheap. Um, the ingredients itself, so to put it in a, in, a, in a bottle to balance it where you can afford to pay and then sell it, that's the goal, I think, you know, is, is having that plan and foreseeing it and, and staying focused on it because one little day of mis, misinterpreting the day, you could really put a setback on you weeks or weeks. Yeah. yeah, I think you really hit a great point around kind of what's that story and what's that narrative behind yeah. the product because yeah. there is so much competition. You look on the shelf and there's just... So much stuff. Even for omiyagi, there's just so yes, many options. Absolutely. So, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? How do you set yourself apart? Um, and I'd love to have you share kind of how you've done that with some of the real estate that you have on the bottles or yeah. with the story of Manelli. And, and also, while we're doing that, uh, share some images that are close-ups of the, of the product so everyone can see them. Right. So I think for the five blends, every blend has a story. It's not just one story behind all five. Each one has a specific story and each one has a specific reason but they're all purpose, if that makes any sense. Um, so I, I, I really wanted to focus on putting something on a plate on a table that everyone around the world could use easily. It also comes with an easy five-step recipe card that I, that, I, that I give you so you can start off using it the right way and then you can kind of grow off of it. And I'm, I've learned that these recipes that I've helped pass out have helped sell it, help people understand it and use it. And then also they can get creative with it. Um, the labeling and stuff is important for me because I've learned that having the store, a short story on each label really helps because people actually do pick it up in the store and they want to know why. You know, they, there's so many different Hawaiian salts on the shelf and then all of a sudden you see Manali Spice Company pop up. Why would anybody pick up Manali Spice Company? I think one, maybe because it looks pretty, maybe because it feels like you can afford it because it's not that big of a bottle. I think the amount is just right for an omiyagi. But I also think that what lies in it is that cool story that people can actually barbecue at their homes and share that story because it's on the bottle. I love that. And I love the, I love the cards, too. That's really been helpful even yes. for me. I have it on my refrigerator. Awesome. <laughs> so um, what's, what's coming up next for Manelli? You know, what's kind of some of the momentum? I know you launched you know, a little bit ago. And mm -hmm. uh, what, what's coming up next? I think what's coming up next for Manelli Spice is, you know, really focusing on the next five SKUs, and I have that kind of lined up already. I'm just kind of fine-tuning them. It, it doesn't, it's not that easy to fine-tune between cost and flavor. 
Um, sometimes you go too much cost and it doesn't taste good <laughs> or it doesn't taste balanced. And if I go too much flavor, then it gets a little expensive. So right now we're getting ready to launch with Foodland Farms Hawaii. Um, I'm excited to do uh, some stuff with Hawaiian Airlines. I'm not quite sure where we're going to go with that yet, but I'm excited. Um, I don't know. I, I, I want to I leave it open right now because I want people to go to my website, you know, manalispice.com and follow me and see what we're doing. And we have, we have new products coming out and new, new recipes every week and every month. So how can people, local people, can support you? How can our community support you? You can go to my website at manalispice.com or you can go to my Instagram, manalispice. You can go to uh, any Foodland Farms here in the next months and find my spice on the shelves. And stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so I know that you've got, um, just your, your mind is always working and it's just so creative. Um, can you share a little bit more about some of like the other products that you're developing or that that you have, um. I have a I have another small baby company that's DBA under the spice rack and it's called Pacific Sorbet. It's out in Safeway, um, Don Quixote Times, and hopefully back in Foodland soon. Um, but that's uh, another five skews I came up with. That are five flavors. I have a Kalo coconut, pineapple calamansi, uh, mango olena, Tahitian vanilla, and a strawberry guava blend. Um, those flavors again have stories behind them. Um, also, I came up with a 2017 cookbook, again, that I won first place with this year. That year was really awesome to get some kind of recognition for the hard work. Um, other than that, I'm just really focusing on Manali Spice and trying to drive this to the next level and getting the next cues out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I know that, you know, we kind of started off the show today sharing about that really deep experience you had of saving Dale's life um, in Manali Bay. Yeah. Um, and I know that you guys are still in touch. Yes. Good friends. Yes. Can you share a little bit about, you know, over the years, um, your friendship really growing? And of course, it was such a <clears throat> huge deal for him to reach out and say, you know, I want to help you with your right. dream and, and underwriting your, your whole yeah. tuition. I think, I think what happened was the day he felt that I saved his life, I think he saved mine. Uh, it was really neat um, when we went over to Lanai with you and, you know, meeting your mom and... Pretty awesome. And, you know, you calling Dale and his wife and, you know, kind of re retelling the story again and, and, you know, sitting on the beach there and just really kind of feeling that love um, for the Manelli Bay and it, and it makes so much sense that you yes. made your company this. It all goes, like I said, it all, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it all stems back to that day on Manelli Bay. I, th I think that, um, you know, as we look at these different flavors here um, and you know, having gone through the Mana Up uh, Accelerator and, and really helping the company and the products like really come to life, um, it's, it's been neat to see how so many people are, are using these for different things. And I know we've, we've used them in cocktails yeah, as well, yeah. right? Absolutely. These, these spices become very, um, very flexible, I want to say. I use it in mixology. I use it in cooking. It's also salts for healing. You know, um, I wouldn't say these are necessarily for healing, but the salts, the salts that live, live within the bottles are, are also natural, so they're good for medicine. Um, so I truly believe I can get you, I can share a lot with you one bite at a time through these little bottles. And I think having you guys come home with me to and I and sharing, bringing that story to life after saying it for how many years now and hanging out with you guys, I get to bring you home and actually let you see and, wear, and, get, and feel the sand and the water that it happened in. And that was important to me, and I appreciate that. And, and being able to speak with Dale, and I, I, I we know we were talking awesome. before about, you actually went out to see him, right? Like, he brought you up on stage, and... He, uh, I, I was 18 years old in college school, he flew me to San Francisco, and he wanted me to be part of this big guest speaking that I know about, kind of dressed me up in my first uh, tuxedo, and, you know, the whole nine yards, and brought me up on the stage, and kind of introduced me to the, his, his 6,000 friends, supposedly, and told them my story, and it kind of hit me real hard at the time, because I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, I was just a kid, right? I was 17 years old. You know, we saved many lives in the beach growing up, but I guess this one was, he took it, uh, took it a lot more serious than everyone else and, again, gave me the opportunity. And get, coming home to visit me every six years, when my daughter turned one, they came to visit. And every six years after that, for about four or five, year, uh, four or five turns, they came back, and then 
now they're going to be 80 years old, Margaret and Dale, and traveling is a little bit difficult. So hopefully I can get the time and maybe Hawaiian Air can fly me out there to go visit them. Is there anything that you can share with us uh, around, you know, you know, more around kind of your journey? And I know that when you were in culinary school, you had kind of another uh, yeah. challenge come up. Uh, and can you kind of share? I mean, I just think that your story has just been so neat with, with the ups and downs and just that perseverance, that perseverance. And yeah. you even saying that when he saved my, when I saved his life, he saved mine. And the fact that you guys have been so in touch over the last, you know, I won't say how old you are, but 20 something, <laughs> maybe 20 something years, I don't know. Um, um, kind of how that's really driven you to be like who you are today and just such an incredible entrepreneur and just really inspiration to many Hawaii people. So after six days before graduating culinary school, I won't get into the story too much, but I was in a house fire. I burned my face and my hands and um, I didn't tell my parents for about seven months. Uh, I had one of my cousins stay with me and he took care of me literally every day. And I had two heart attacks at 18 years old in the hospital through the trauma of getting burnt. And uh, it wasn't fun. I was very alone. Um, I thought I was a failure because here I am supposed to become this great chef. After this great story and da da da, I ended up burning myself in a major house fire and I almost quit cooking. Um, I didn't want nothing to do with it. I actually went into a rough time between the ages of 18 and 20, 21. Um, I had nightmares for about 25 years. I still go through them every once in a while. <clears throat> but it, <clears throat> excuse me. But what I think that keeps me going is my family. Setting, setting myself up to not fail, it wasn't an option. Yeah, you, can, you can really feel um, that strength, especially with your mom, um, just kind of yeah. that backbone of your family. And, yeah. And, and she's, she's, she's done a lot. Can't even get into that. <laughs> she's done a lot. Um, so, you know, now that you've got the company, I, I'm excited to, to see the next. Yes. Uh, five flavors coming out, the Foodland launch coming yes. up, um, being able for people to get it in their hands yes, um, at an individual level and in our own kitchens as opposed to only being able to get it you know, through the hotel because it was yes. in the dish that I loved or something <laughs> like that. Um, are there any last things you want to um, close with? Uh, uh, I just want to say mahalo, mahalo to Hawaii, mahalo to the culinary world and the people, mahalo to Dell and Margaret. Um, Mana up, of course. My team there is also so so beautiful and awesome. And I just want to say thank you to everybody to make this possible. Wow. Well, thank you, Chef Adam, for being on the show today. And thank really you. excited for um, hearing the next big things coming from Manelli Spice Company. I'm excited. Aloha. Aloha.